Hello, this is Manos from Development. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create and edit a generic remote control and how to set up the DOIT application to send MIDI messages to this generic remote control. I will use Cubase Pro 10.5, but more or less the same process goes for any major DAW out there. So let's get started. In the beginning, I have to prepare my DAW. So I open the Preferences window and I find the MIDI Filter tab. I select MIDI Channel 2 and 3. By doing this, I'm telling Cubase not to record any MIDI message that comes from these two specific MIDI channels. Don't confuse these channels with VST instrument channels. These channels are for MIDI input only. And you must have in mind that any musical events you play and record are usually coming from this MIDI channel 1. This is the basic channel for music. So, in my case, MIDI channel 1 is being recorded, but channels 2 and 3 are excluded. Next step is to connect DOID to Android MIDI port. I tap on Settings and I select the available MIDI port. Then I tap on Buttons. This preset is already loaded. Here I will show you buttons, for example Play button, Pause button and the Edit Channel button, which has the letter E inside the parentheses. The first step is to go to Cubase and from the main menu select Studio, Studio Setup. On the left there is already a generic remote control. It is the same set of commands which are loaded in DOIT at this moment. The first list contains all MIDI messages which come from DOIT. The second list contains all the target parameters of Cubase. For example, let's scroll down to find play button. Here it is. And there it is. OK, here it says that play button is a controller on channel 3. It's the controller 13 with uh, maximum value 1, 2, 7. And it's set to receive only. In the second list, the target is the Cubase Transport Device Start. The flag P means push button. At this moment, the MIDI input is set to not connected, so this uh, generic remote control does not communicate with DOIT. I have to keep it untouched, so I must create a new one. I go here, top left corner and click on the plus button, and then on generic remote. There it is, generic remote 2. I set Android as the MIDI input, in your case it may be a different name. There are two commands left in here. No problem, I delete them one by one. I click on Add to add my first command. Set the name Play and let's jump into Doit. Here it is, the Play button. I select Edit Mode and tap on Play. I choose Controller, Enable, Controller 13, Channel 3. I set a text label, text color, text size, background color and I go back. Play button is ready. It sends controller 13. Let's edit the pause button now. It sends controller 14 on channel 3 and so on. I select play mode and I go back on Cubase. Instead of setting these parameters manually, I click on this check button to activate Learn. I tap on Play and voila! Cubase shows controller 13 on channel 3. I click on Add. I set the name of this command, Pause. Learn is already active. On Doit, I tap on Pause button and controller 14 on channel 3 is now set. I deactivate Learn 
and set both flags to receive. The second list is not updated correctly. This is not a problem. I click apply, then I click on another category and back to my generic remote 2. Now it's updated. Play must be assigned to transport. The same goes for pause. Device is the only option here. Play is start, pause is stop. Both buttons are push buttons. I click OK. Let's test it. Play. Stop. Play. Stop. I will leave a link in the description below about push button and toggle flags. It leads to Cubase user manual. I think it's useful, so take a look. Now, let's see the edit channel button. In Cubase, when I click on this button with the letter E, I see an overview of the selected channel. Let me add an audio track too. I click on letter E. This is the entire audio channel. Inserts, EQ section, effect sense, the fader, much more. Now, let's jump into Do It. This is the E button. I select Edit Mode. The properties are Controller 19, Channel 2, Name, Colors, Text Size, the usual things. I select Play Mode and back on Cubase to set this button. I add a third button and I name it uh, E. Learn. I tap it on Do It. OK, there it is. Apply. The button E is Command Edit. Um, I must find uh, Edit Channel Settings. That's it. I click OK. There it is. The last example is something different. Remember, we are working with a generic remote control, not a Mackie control or similar protocols. Let's open Cubase Mixer. This is the audio track I had before. Let me add some more audio tracks. Let's go on Do It, but this time I select the faders. I'm gonna use the first fader with red color. Edit fader. It is Controller 1 on channel 3 and the rest have to do with the graphics. I'm going back and I jump into Cubase again. Add one more and give a name channel volume. Learn. I move the fader on Doit. Yes, it's there. Channel 3, controller 1, maximum value, receive. Apply, refresh. Mixer, select channel and volume. Let's see if it works. This channel here is selected, and there it is, it's moving. When you finish the setup of your generic remote control, you must export these settings to an XML file for backup. Click on Export, give a file name and save. You can import this file to another Cubase. 
Thanks for watching.